Here are the top stories for today, August 14, 2020. The government is recalibrating its strategies and response to better address the health crisis. More than 115,000 public transport drivers have received their emergency cash subsidies. The National Bureau of Investigation, or NBI, forms a task force that would investigate anomalies hounding PhilHealth. And the Quezon City Symphonic Band offers free online music lessons. Good day, I'm Rom Dufo. Welcome to PNA Newsroom. The government is recalibrating its strategies and response to the COVID-19 pandemic. National Action Plan on COVID-19 Chief Implementer Secretary Calito Galvez Jr. says the government has already reassessed COVID-19 response measures to manage local transmission. Citing the government's past experiences in Cebu City, Galvez said the lack of enough isolation facilities, as well as the implementation of a more relaxed general community quarantine or GCQ, has led to a sharp spike of COVID-19 cases. Ang uh, mga pagkukulang po na ito ay tinatama po natin at ang iyong mga tinatawag na mga comment at saka mga suggestions ng ibang uh, health workers at saka mga ibang professionals ay we, we take it, taking in into consideration. Meanwhile, Galvez said the country still has sufficient test kits as the government has already bought around 8 million testing kits and another 2 million are set to arrive. He said there is still about 1 million sets of personal protective equipment or PPE in their inventory while another 5 million sets are to be procured soon. The government is also purchasing treatment machines for critical and severe COVID-19 patients. Nakipagunahin po kami sa mga ibang pharmaceutical companies para maging maganda po yung supply chain ng ating mga testing, testing uh, facilities at saka yung tinatawag nating mga consumables. Meanwhile, the Department of Education has moved the start of classes this year to October 5 amid concerns on the shift to distance learning. Students are supposed to learn through TV, radio, printed materials or the internet as part of efforts to prevent the spread of COVID-19. President Duterte earlier signed a law allowing the DepEd to move the opening of classes beyond August. Members of the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases meet today to determine whether the National Capital Region and the four nearby provinces would remain under MECQ or will shift to a more relaxed GCQ after August 18. Defense Chief Delfin Lorenzana said the task force will come up with their recommendation to the President. Galvez believes the country cannot continue imposing lockdowns as there is a pressing need to do something to reopen the economy. The President is expected to announce his decision on August 17. For European Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines or ECCP, businesses will be having a harder time recuperating from their loss if the government will extend stringent community quarantine. ECCPP President Nabil Francis said the current Modified Enhanced Community Quarantine or MECQ should be the last and the government should start to ease restrictions. He said lockdowns are measures to help boost the healthcare capacity of the country while slowing down the spread of COVID-19. The ECCP recommends the easing of restrictions starting mid-August. This after results of their survey shows travel restrictions, reduced demand and business cash flow are among the top concerns for European firms. About 75% of the respondents also expressed they are dissatisfied over the current measures and economic stimulus efforts of the Philippine government. European enterprises also called for government support such as fast-tracking internet and infrastructure improvements, further ease of doing business as well as providing tax breaks and extending tax filing. More than 115,000 public transport drivers have received their emergency cash subsidies from the Department of Social Welfare and Development, or DSWD. Secretary Rolando Bautista assured the public that the agency is continuously looking after the welfare of drivers of public utility vehicles and the Transport Network Vehicle Service, or TNVS, amid the government's re-imposition of MECQ and NCR and other neighboring provinces. 
Included in the agency's list of SAP2 recipients are the 115,464 TNVS and PUV drivers. Bautista said those public transport drivers who were not included in the LTFRB lists of SAP beneficiaries have already been referred to the DSWD field offices and have been included in the list of waitlisted recipients. Hindi natin kanilimutan ang sector ng mga chopper. Sa katunayan, nakapamahagi na ang DSWD ng higit 857.3 milyong piso para sa ayuda ng higit isang daang libong drivers ng Transport Network Vehicle Service, Public Utility Jeepneys sa buong BADSA base sa listahan na ibinigay ng Land, Transportation, Franchising and Regulatory Board. In Antique, 12 local government units have submitted their approved ordinances on quarantine and health safety protocols to the Department of the Interior and Local Government. DALG Antique Provincial Director Cheryl Takda said the ordinance is necessary because it will provide the local police a legal basis in the filing of charges against violators of quarantine and health safety standard protocols. The protocols include the mandatory wearing of face masks, safe physical distancing, and frequent hand washing aside from creating awareness and support from all stakeholders. A number of beneficiaries rushed to pay out centers to claim their social amelioration cash assistance for fear that it might no longer be available after August 15. DSWD Secretary Josalito Bautista said the beneficiaries need not panic because the emergency subsidy wired to them will remain in their restricted bank accounts beyond the mid-August deadline set by the agency. Nasa restricted transactional accounts lang nila ang pera. Maari nila gamitin anumang oras ang pera, pambili sa mga establishments na tumatanggap ng electronic wallets, pambayad ng kuryente o tubig. Maari ding i-cash out kung kailangan ng pera kahit ito ay lumagpas pa sa Agosto a 15. Nakikiusap po kami sa ating mga kabayan na huwag basta maniwala sa mga nakukuha na impormasyon na hindi galing sa pahayag ng DSWD o ng partner FSPs. The DSWD launched the USAP Tayo platform to provide the public with a more efficient avenue about the government's social amelioration program. The move is in response to common complaints and concerns of the public on the program, such as the ineligibility of the other beneficiaries, violations of the distribution process, and delay in the distribution of the aid, among others. The DSWD also alerts the public versus online scammers. They may be reached through these numbers and email address. Still to come, the National Bureau of Investigation formed a task force that would investigate anomalies hounding field health and the planned mass layoff of over 100 LRT1 workforce personnel has been put on hold. More on these with the PNA Newsroom continues. Sa matinding laban natin sa Coronavirus Disease 2019, sugpuin din natin ang pagkalat ng fake news. Huwag magbahagi ng impormasyon na hindi tiyak ang pinagmulan. I-check mabuti ang source ng balita. Kumuha lamang ng impormasyon mula sa mga official channel ng Department of Health. Huwag magpadala sa maling balita. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. The task force formed by the National Bureau of Investigation to look into anomalies in PhilHealth is preparing its next move in investigating the state of the health insurance firm. Bench Bondock with more. 
The National Bureau of Investigation on Thursday named the members of the newly formed task force that would investigate anomalies hounding the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth. It will be composed of agents and investigators from the Anti-Graft Division, Anti-Fraud Division, Special Action Unit, Computer Crimes Division, Special Operations Group, and Digital Forensic Laboratory. The investigation of the task force would include the audit of PhilHealth's finances and the conduct of lifestyle checks on its officials and employees. Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara said the agency is outlining its next move in looking into the anomalies in the state health insurance firm. Malacanang meanwhile advised cancer-stricken PhilHealth President and CEO Ricardo Morales to prioritize his health amid the controversies hounding the state-owned corporation. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said while there is no advice from President Rodrigo Duterte, it would be best for Morales to focus on his health. Morales disclosed that he was diagnosed with lymphoma or cancer of the lymph nodes right after Duterte ordered the Department of Justice to lead the task force that would investigate the supposed rampant corruption within PhilHealth. In other news, Senator Christopher Bongo has filed two bills to strengthen the national program for eradicating tuberculosis and to expand PhilHealth's coverage of treatment services for kidney failure. Senate Bill 1748 seeks to provide for the creation of a TB registry and monitoring system which will address the issue of the underreporting of TB cases. The measure also seeks to expand the benefit package of PhilHealth to include the coverage of multi-drug resistant tuberculosis and extensively drug-resistant tuberculosis. Goes other bill, Senate Bill 1749, aims to ensure that comprehensive renal replacement therapy services are available to all Filipinos suffering from end-stage kidney disease. It expands PhilHealth's benefit package for kidney transplant and provides for the provision of free dialysis services to indigent patients. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Ben Bondo. Local officials locked down a village in Leyte following reports that several residents had contact with persons infected with COVID-19. More on this and other news from the provinces from William Theo. Burauen municipality in Leyte has imposed a three-day lockdown on one of its villages. Mayor Juanito Renomeron placed Libas Village on lockdown from noontime of August 12 until August 15 to facilitate contact tracing. The town enforced the measure after it was found that two COVID-19 patients visited the village on July 17, July 31st, and August 1st. The Burauen Rural Health Unit has initially identified 11 Libas residents who had close interaction with the patient. In Zamboanga City, the Department of Social Welfare and Development Region 9 started Thursday the release through direct payout of the second tranche of the Social Amelioration Program or SAP. 23 of the 98 barangays are covered in the first batch of the direct payout. Earlier this week, DSWD has downloaded some 600 million pesos for the payment of the SAP second tranche. The first batch of beneficiaries in the second tranche will receive 5,000 pesos, while the 13,000 others who were left out of the release in the first tranche will get 10,000 pesos. For the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Police and military officers in Iligan City are undergoing training through TESDA to improve their skills and in turn help teach and empower others. More on this from Christine Lind Vihante. To address the challenge of not having enough trainers to reach far-flung communities, the Technical Skills and Development Authority in Lanao del Norte is set to provide skills training to police and military officers in the province. Dubbed as Training of Trainers, TESDA inked with the Department of National Defense and the Philippine National Police to seal their commitment in bringing in the government services in support of EO70 or the Whole of Nation approach. If those barangays who are uh, actually uh, very far from the urban center, this time there's no reason that we cannot serve them because we have adequate number of highly trained Tibet trainers. But 
coming from the armed forces of the Philippines and Philippine National Police. Its first batch will be coming from the 4th Mechanized Infantry Battalion, 554th Engineer Battalion, the Iligan City Police Office, and residents from Bahay Silangan of this city. I would like to extend our heartfelt thanks sa TESDA for this opportunity for our men to be uh, trained. They will have uh, upliftment on their skills. Uh, we would like to thank you in advance for the talent, expertise, and time that you will impart to our troops because these skills will uh, help us and help them hone their talents, not only uh, improve their skills as well as their confidence in facing various uh, situations and missions uh, in support to the armed forces and the, in the service of the Filipino people. Moreover, the personnel will eventually help TESDA in skills training and empowering former rebels, indigenous people, and other members of remote communities. For PNA Newsroom, Christine Lin Viajante of PIA Ligan City Information Center. The Chinese embassy in Manila on Thursday turned over 50 ventilators to the Philippines, completing the 130 units it committed to support the country's response against COVID-19. Chinese Ambassador Wang Xilian and Philippine Foreign Affairs Secretary Tudor Roxin Jr. graced the turnover ceremony at the Department of Foreign Affairs. Noting the current pandemic situation in the Philippines, the embassy said it is also donating cash and medical supplies to Philippine medical institutions to help medical professionals and frontliners. The embassy will also donate urgently needed medical equipment such as high-flow nasal cannula oxygen therapy equipment to the Philippines. It said China will continue to provide support and assistance to the Philippines and stand together with the country to jointly tackle the challenge of the pandemic. The planned mass layoff of over 100 or 20 percent of the LRT1 workforce has been put on hold. The Light Rail Manila Corporation on Thursday said while the basis for retrenchment remains legally valid, it will instead recalibrate its strategies to continue supporting its personnel and the government. It said the Department of Transportation has also pledged to support LRMC and find equitable solutions to support its employees. It has also announced that there will be company-wide testing for the COVID-19 from August 14 to 19. The LRMC said this is also part of preparations as it anticipates the resumption of LRT1 operations once the modified ECQ is lifted in Metro Manila. On Wednesday, the LRMC announced a mass layoff that was scheduled to take effect September 15 due to a 90% decline in the ridership of the rail service caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. In our business news, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas reported gains in its policy for rural and cooperative banks or RCBs to extend lending to micro, small and medium enterprises affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. BSP Governor Benjamin Diokno said 66 RCBs lent about 1.5 billion pesos to MSMEs in the reserve week ending July 23. This is an expansion from the 1 billion pesos extended by 39 RCBs in the week ending April 30. Diokno said 10 RCBs also used new loans to finance critically impacted large enterprises worth 100 million pesos as their compliance with the reserve requirement. He said amid the pandemic, rural banks have been actively lending and extending financing relief to the MSME sector. He said RCBs also exhibited commitment to empower and assist MSMEs by extending, renewing, and restructuring loans to affected sectors. Up next, rebel returnees from Umingan, Pangasinan have received farm machinery and livelihood assistance from the government. And the Quezon City Symphonic Band offers free online music lessons. The PNA Newser returns after these reminders. Tandaan ang tamang paraan ng paghuhugas at paglilinis ng kamay upang makaiwas sa iba't ibang karamdaman. 
Basahin ng tubig ang mga kamay at sabunin. Unang sabunin ang mga palad at ang likod ng mga kamay. Kuskusin na maigi ang pagitan ng mga daliri at maging ang mga kuko. Isunod ang pagitan ng mga hinlalaki at kuskusin ng paigot ang mga dulo ng mga daliri sa magkabilang palad. Banlawang mabuti ang mga kamay sa malinis na tubig at patuyuin ang mga kamay gamit ang single-use towel o air dryer. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. The Bank Samoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, in partnership with the United Nations, signed on Thursday a social protection program for the vulnerable sectors of the region. The program's objective is to reduce social and economic risk and vulnerability and to alleviate extreme poverty and deprivation. BARMM Chief Minister Ehud Murad Ebrahim said, The confluence is an intervention that will institutionalize a risk-informed, shock-responsive social protection system. The partnership also highlights the regional government's commitment to ensure the Bangsamoro is prepared even after the COVID-19 pandemic. The Food and Agricultural Organization, in partnership with the Ministry of Social Services and Development, is set to provide emergency cash aid for 1,800 indigent families in BARMM to complement the government's SAP package. Some 72 former members of the Communist Party of the Philippines New People's Army from Umingan, Pangasinan have received far machinery, livelihood and financial aid. The police Ilocos Regional Office said the rebel returnees and supporters received farming equipment and materials, pasteurized milk and sacks of rice, livelihood provisions such as fertilizers and seeds, and personal protective equipment. They also received financial aid on top of the scholarship grants on livelihood programs and other privileges. The activity is part of the Oplan Panagsubli, an initiative of the Police Provincial Office through the Provincial Task Force to end local communist armed conflict. The first batch of rebel returnees under Oplan Panagsubli was welcomed in a program in November last year. Meanwhile, Surigao del Sur Governor Alexander Pimentel condemned the communist NPA for what he described as dastardly killings perpetrated against indigenous peoples in the province. Pimentel noted the series of killings of the Manobo tribesmen last month, particularly in Tandag City and in the town of San Miguel. He said these acts are now only meant to silence and stifle the growing voice of opposition to the communist ideology, but also to instill fear, anger, and hatred in the people. Haudon Jumar Bokales, the indigenous people mandatory representative of Lianga Town, supported the statement of Pimentel as he also denounced the NPA for the series of killings in the area. National and local officials on Thursday formally turned over completed housing units to beneficiaries and victims of Super Typhoon Yolanda in Biliran Town, Biliran Province. The Yolanda Permanent Housing Project included the Vine Grace Village in Barangay Borabod and San Antonio Village in Barangay Village Inage, which were turned over to beneficiaries through the assistance of Biliran Mayor Grace Castle. Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles thanked national government agencies and local government units for their cooperation and swift action. He assured that the Duterte administration was keen on fulfilling its commitment to address the needs of Yolanda victims. He notes, the ultimate goal was to finish all Yolanda projects before the president's term ends. Based on data from the National Housing Authority, as of June 2020, out of 54,508 housing units allocated for Region 8, over 35,000 or 85% have already been completed. Health workers and other frontliners in Agusan del Norte received thank you notes and other tokens from various stakeholders in appreciation of their efforts to stop the spread of COVID-19. Jennifer Pena Gaetano with a story. The Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council members of Agusan del Norte visited the medical frontliners in the existing health facilities in the province. 
The team also reached out to the personnel of the rural health units and isolation facilities and handed over food and gift packs to the frontliners. Those who are manning the quarantine control points have also received the same from the team. This activity formed part of the tribute initiated by the PDRRMC Agusan del Norte for the 885 frontliners in the said province who continuously give their best in serving the people amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Dumating na tayo sa punto na ang ating mga frontliners, they're already tired. That's why uh, we have to lift their spirits para naman uh, they will continue serving, they will continue protecting our people from this COVID. The youth organizations and volunteers also gave their thank you cards to the frontliners. So, um, ang purpose sa among uh, letter is para sa mga frontliners na mo diri sa nasipit nga ga service in this pandemic nga walay duwa-duwa yun. In these trying times, naadyod sila, wala, sila, wala nilagi, wala sa ilaha ang ilang ot as mga frontliners. Meanwhile, for a frontliner like Dr. Gertrude Sembrano, she's thankful for the local government's initiative in recognizing their valuable contributions to the people during this time of the pandemic. Na magpasalamat ko niyo nga, nakitansad ninyo ang among mga dibuhat, nakitansad ninyo ang among pagpaningkamot na makaservisyo sa katawan sa Buenas Car, especially kay kami man daring aside. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Jennifer Peña Gaitano of the Philippine Information Agency, Caraga. In sports, the Philippine Sports Commissioner, PSC, announced it has released 351 million pesos to support the national athletes vying for spots in next year's Tokyo Olympics. This despite its budget cut of almost 1.37 billion pesos to support the national government's battle against COVID-19. The Philippine Amateur Track and Field Association got the biggest share of the released budget, getting 20.2 million pesos. The Association of Boxing Alliances in the Philippines came in second with 13 million pesos, while the Gymnastics Association of the Philippines received 7.8 million. The Samahang Weightlifting ng Pilipinas, on the other hand, got 11.2 million pesos from the PSC. Here now is the latest in our community billboard. The Quezon City Symphonic Band is offering free online music lessons to interested individuals. The group is offering free lessons for those who want to learn how to fl play flute, clarinet, alto saxophone, trumpet, trombone, French horn, and even drums. Conductor Vincent Leo Ramos says the band seeks to help those who are stressed, most especially due to the pandemic, and teach them a new skill at the same time. There is no age requirement, but students must have their own instruments. Classes will be done on a one-on-one -on -one basis. The free online music lesson is also open to non-residents of the city. Those who are interested in the free online music lesson may sign up through the Quezon City Symphonic Band Facebook page. Online classes will start August 17. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. The government is recalibrating its strategies and response to better address the health crisis. More than 115,000 public transport drivers have received their emergency cash subsidies. The National Bureau of Investigation, or NBI, forms a task force that would investigate anomalies hounding field health. And the Quezon City Symphonic Band offers free online music lessons. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check more news content, check our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags on all our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that the really those of the biggest stories that you need to know from PNA Newsroom. I am Rom Dufo. Good day and stay safe.